Have you shopped for children's books at a bookstore lately? I really wanted please. If you go into Barnes & Noble, you will be met with a wall of biographies. Book editor Bethany Mandel's frustrated that today's bookstores sell only certain kinds of children's books. There's probably 27 different books about former Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Great. There are also a ton about Kamala Harris. Great. There are lots of books on people like Hillary Clinton, Justice Sotomayor, Rachel Carson, AOC, Elizabeth Warren, Greta Thunberg. How dare you? But where are the biographies on conservatives? Mandel couldn't find any. Not one on Amy Coney Barrett or Margaret Thatcher or Winston Churchill. None. So Mandel says, It's time to bring some of those books to the market because Lord knows the publishing industry won't. So she created Heroes of Liberty, a new biography series. Her children's books tell stories it's about people devoted to the values that made this country great. You're indoctrinating kids, just like the left does. And that's a very fair question, and it's a question we get a lot. My answer to them is read the books. Her top seller is about Thomas Sowell, who overcame adversity to become a famous economist. He didn't have uh, running hot water, electricity, or indoor toilets. When Sowell's family moved, his new teachers put him in a lower grade because they assumed he couldn't compete with the white kids. Sowell objected to that. He's like, I'd like to speak to the principal. He didn't play the victim. He didn't cry. He stood up for himself and he said, I will prove to you that I'm capable of doing fourth grade math. The principal actually listened, gave him a test, and when Sowell aced the test, the principal told the teachers, take this young man to the fourth grade, where he belongs. Sowell didn't let racism or poverty stop him. He helped pay his family's expenses by delivering groceries. By contrast, today's big publishing houses portray black people as victims who can only advance through protest. In this book, we are talking about activism. Kind of touches on intersectionality and protesting. Anti-racist baby is bred, not born. Anti-racist baby is raised to make society transform. Kids are taught to see color and told being colorblind is denial. When you promote this hyper-awareness of race, kids didn't necessarily see it before, but now they see it everywhere. It's a pretty toxic way to grow up because they are seeing their friend as black, white, or brown instead of Lucy or Sally. Conservatives make up about half the country, but book publishers rarely sell kids' books about them. Why won't they? They're in business to make money. I know. You'd think, right? But the problem is when they produce... 27 books about Ruth Bader Ginsburg or anti-racist baby board books, those are being bought in bulk by libraries. And so they have this incentive built in to continue to churn out progressive ideological books. What, all librarians lean left? Mostly, yeah. That surprised me. I think of librarians as apolitical researchers and teachers. But look at their political donations. 90% went to Democrats. I'm surprised it's that low, honestly. I'm surprised it's not 100%. To a book publisher, libraries matter more than parents, because while a parent might buy a few books, libraries buy hundreds, paid for by you. It's our tax dollars buying 1,000 copies of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and zero about Amy Coney Barrett. Mandel's book about Coney Barrett says things like, for Amy, being a mother is no less important than being a judge. In girls' children's literature, there's absolutely zero messaging about motherhood. They are told you can be a NASA scientist, you can be an entomologist. None mention did they have children. And girls are not taught that you can have all these career ambitions and also be a mother. My husband, Jesse, my son, JP, my daughter, Emma, my daughter, Juliet, my daughter, Tess, my daughter, Vivian, and my son, Liam. The most important thing to me is being a mother and being a wife. And that's not something we're allowed to really say anymore, but it's true. Of course, Mandel's books will be all about conservatives. I'm not a conservative, I'm libertarian, but I'm glad there will be alternatives to what today's big publishers pick. If you wanna 
you're a free thinker, you're gonna need something that teaches about freedom. There are others. The Tuttle Twins have sold several million books. Back before you were born, schools often taught the principles of a free society. But not anymore. Their books feature people like Frederick Bastiat. And we all have a right to liberty, which means we can do stuff without people stopping us. Julie Borowski's books teach about the free market. I was created without any central planners. Those book creators had to self-publish because traditional publishers today are just hostile to people like them. We offered an extremely generous uh, payment for illustrators, and we were told straight up, I'm afraid of getting canceled. I'm afraid of working on a Ronald Reagan book and it getting public and having a hard time finding work thereafter. And so the first illustrators that we had to use were Bulgarian and Brazilian and Romanian. If we have a hard time literally paying people many thousands of dollars to just illustrate books, we're never going to get a book printed about Amy Coney Barrett with a Scholastic, with a Penguin Random House. It's it, it's just not going to happen. But a free market can't be held back for long. Entrepreneurs have now created alternative books that teach America's virtues. Rights to life, liberty, and property are so important, they need to be protected. Ooh, that's good. I'm going to write that down. Thanks for watching our video. If you want to help us cover more stories like this, hit that button.